Hola everyone! Hello! So for today, we are going to talk about the inclusions of gross income. So the last time, we have talked about the exclusions of gross income or those items of gross income that are not included and they are exempted from taxation. So for today, in this video, I am going to talk about the inclusions of gross income or those included and those taxable items for gross income. Okay, so before anything else, let us go back to the definition of gross income, which means that the total income of taxpayers subject to tax, which includes gains, profits, and income derived from any sources, whether legal or illegal. So time and time again, we've already established that when we say gross income, these are the income of a taxpayer that accrues to them, which gives a return on the capital for these taxpayers, whether coming from a legal source or an illegal source. The codal definition of gross income enumerates 11 items, which are the following. Okay, so we have compensation for services in whatever form paid, gross income derived from the conduct of trade, business, or exercise of profession, gains derived from dealings in properties, interest, rents, royalties, dividends, annuities, prices and winnings, pensions, and partners share from the net income of a general professional partnership. Okay, so these are the items listed in the codal definition of your gross income. However, we have a catch-all provision for your gross income, meaning all income derived from whatever sources ang tinutukoy natin kapag sinasabi natin ang gross income. As long as these income are not subject to final tax, capital gains tax, or any special regimes of tax, and those are not excluded or exempted by law, treaty, or contract from taxation. So basically, all items that accrue to the taxpayer that gives a benefit to the taxpayer, they, they are considered as gross income as long as they do not fall into these categories. So, hindi sila papasok sa scheme ni final tax, hindi sila papasok dun sa scheme ni capital gains tax, and hindi rin sila exempted or excluded by law, treaty, or contract from taxation. So, all things will go to your gross income subjected to your regular income tax kapag hindi na sila kasali sa mga schemes na to. Okay, so that's what gross income means. Okay, so iisa-isayin natin lahat yung nasa codal definition of gross income. And we have the first one, compensation income. Okay, so we have three types of employees according to their function when we talk about compensation income. So number one are those managerial employees. And these are those employees who are given powers or prerogatives to lay down and execute managerial policies in the company. We also have those supervisory employees or those who effectively recommend such managerial actions if the exercise of such authority is not merely routinary or clerical, clerical in nature, but requires the use of independent judgment. So basically, these managerial and supervisory employees are those nasa taas no ating company or the business. And we also have those rank and file employees or those who neither hold a managerial and supervisory functions. So basically, they are those junior officers, junior employees of a certain business. And sila yung mga tinatawag nating rank and file employees. Okay, so we also have two types of employees as to their taxability. Number one are those minimum wage earners. So these are the employees who are recipients of minimum wage or yung nanggaling doon sa statutory threshold for minimum wage earners. So basically, we have those regional uh, rates for this and we can always access them through the internet. So if you want to check about this, you can just Google minimum wage earners. Okay, so when we say minimum wage earners, they are exempt from income tax on their compensation. And then the other one is the regular employees or those employees who are subject to the regular progressive income tax. So when we talk about compensation income, there are also those non-taxable compensation income that are not going to be a part of your gross compensation income. 
So the last time we've discussed about exclusions of gross income, actually we've already discussed about this, your mandatory contributions to GSIS, SSS, Pag-ibig, PhilHealth, and Union Juice, and those exempt benefits under the NIRC. So basically we've already discussed these two and you can always find them on the exclusions of gross income video. We also have those benefits necessary to trade, business, or conduct of profession of the employer and benefits for the convenience or advantage of the employer. So later on, we will discuss about this necessary and convenience of the employer. But for now, we are going back to your exempt benefits under the NIRC. So basically, we've discussed about this. So like, like what I've said a while ago, we've discussed about this. Remunerations received as incidents of employment, the minimum benefits, 13-month pay, and other benefits, and certain benefits of minimum wage earners. Okay, so uh, we've already discussed about your exempt benefits under the NIRC, particularly your the minimum benefits and 13-month pay and other benefits. However, I'm going to discuss it briefly again since I've made this infograph. And it says here are the, the minimum benefits and 13-month pay and other benefits taxable. So basically, this infograph will help you to determine whether these the minimum benefits and 13-month pay and other benefits are going to be taxable. So the first question that you should ask yourself is this one. Does the de minimum benefit exceed the regulatory limit? So this regulatory limit are those presented last time in your exclusions of gross income. So if you still remember those, then well and good. But if not, it can be found in sub video for exclusions of gross income part 3. And it can be found also under your revenue regulation 5-2011. And we have the following revisions for that or amendments. We have Revenue Regulations 8-2012, Revenue Regulation 1-2015, and Revenue Regulation 11-2018 or the amendments for train law. If the answer is no, then the de minimum benefit will be exempted from your income tax. However, if the answer is yes, you have to answer another question. What is the function of the employee receiving the benefits? Okay, so the last time we've discussed about exclusion, I did not introduce yet the uh, functions of employer receiving the benefits for you to not be confused. But in here, we are going to discuss. So again, if the answer is yes, you have to answer this question. What is the function of the employee receiving the benefits? So in this question, we have two possible answers for this. The first one is managerial or supervisory. And the second one is your rank and file employee. Okay, so if the answer is managerial or supervisory, then this will be subjected to your fringe benefit tax. So the excess coming from the de minimum benefits will be subjected to your fringe benefit tax. But if the answer is rank and file employee, the excess will be added to your 13-month pay and other benefits. So we go to the next question for this one. Does the 13-month pay and other benefits exceed 90000 So as you all know already, we have a threshold when we talk about 13-month pay and other benefits, which is 90000 So if the answer is no, then automatic all of the de minimum benefits will be exempted. However, when the answer is yes, the excess of 90000 will be added to your compensation income. So sa madaling salita, kapag ang de minimum benefits na isang rank and file employee ay nag-exceed, i-add natin yan sa 13-month pay and other benefits nila. And kapag nag-exceed siya ng 90000 all the excess of 90,000 will be added to your compensation income. Okay, as for managerial or supervisory employees, when we talk about their 13-month pay and other benefits, the same will go for the excess of 90,000. If there is an excess for 90,000, then it will be added to the compensation income of the employee. But if the answer is no, then all of the 13-month pay and other benefits will be exempt. So basically, that's the infograph and you can go back to this whenever you do your de minimum benefits and 13-month pay and other benefits. Okay, so we have here an example. So we have Aries 
who has the following salaries and benefits during the year. He is a rank and file employee who works as a private school teacher in Lawag. And we have two questions for this problem. Compute the total gross income subject to regular income tax and the income exempt to regular income tax. Okay, using the info graph, so we have the first question. Does the minimi benefit exceed the regulatory limit? So going back to the problem, we have the following items of salary and benefits. So isa-isayin natin kung ano ang laman ng exempt the minimum benefits ni Aris. So first, we have your uniform allowance and our regulatory limit natin is 6,000 but the actual receipt of Aris is 50,000. Therefore, the exempted amount only is 6,000 since this is the regulatory limit. So we have an excess of 44,000. The next one, we have medical assistance and the regulatory limit is 10,000. The actual receipt of Aris is 10,000, thus it will be exempted. The next one, rice subsidy and our regulatory limit natin dito is 2,000 per month. So in a year, we have 24,000 and the actual receipt of Aris is 15,000. Therefore, this will all be totally exempted since it does not exceed the regulatory limit. The next one, we have laundry allowance. Our regulatory limit for laundry allowance is 300 per month or 3,600 per year and Aris received 10,000 as laundry allowance. Therefore, the only exempted amount is 3,600 and the excess will be 6,400. For the monetized and news vacation leave, if it is a private employee, the max is 10 days or the regulatory limit is 10 days. Therefore, all of the 10,000 as actual leave or monetized and news leave credits of Iris will be exempted since naka-incur lang siya or nakapag-monetize lang siya ng 10 days. Okay, so in our table, we have here exempted of 44,600 and an excess of 50,400 coming from the uniform allowance and your laundry allowance. So from this, we can say that the de minimi benefit exceeded the regulatory limit since we have an excess of 50,400. So our answer is yes, and then we have to go to the next question, which is what is the function of the employee receiving the benefits? So we have here illustration number one, yung problem natin says that he is a rank and file employee who works as a private school teacher in Lawag City. So our answer in here will be rank and file employee. Okay, so for a rank and file employee, we have to add the excess, the minimum benefits to the 13 month pay and other benefits. So in here, we have the 13th and 14 month pay constituting your 13 month pay and other benefits amounting to 84,000. We have to add the excess, the minimum benefits of 50,400 and our total is 134,400. So our answer in this question is yes. Therefore, we have to add the excess of 90,000 to the compensation income. So in here, we have an excess of 44,400 and kailangan natin siyang i-add doon sa taxable compensation natin na 500,000 for the year na naka-receive si Aris ng salary and benefits of such. Therefore, our taxable compensation income will be 544,400 and the exempt benefits will be the following. Your employer's SSS contribution of 2,000, 13 month pay and other benefits of 90,000 and the exempt the minimum benefits coming from your regulatory limits of 44,600. So our total exempt amount is 136,600. So the answer for the question is 544,400 and the second question is 136,600. Now for the next illustration, assuming Aris is a private employee and he is occupying a managerial position, does the de minimi benefits exceed the threshold or regulatory limit? So we have here yes. So we have to answer the next question, what is the function? And alam naman natin na ang function niya is managerial or supervisory. Therefore, the excess will all go to your fringe benefits tax of 35 
percent or the gross up of 65 percent but for fringe benefit taxes i'm not going to discuss this yet in this video but probably for the next video already okay so if we answered managerial or supervisory it will all go to your fringe benefit tax the excess of 50,400 now for the next question we have uh, does the 13 month pay and other benefits exceed 90,000 so the 13 month pay and other benefits is only 84,000 therefore the answer here is no and all of these will be exempted so if we go back, the taxable compensation will be 500,000 and the exempt benefits will be your employer's SSS contribution of 2,000, 13 month pay and other benefits of 84,000 and that is for a total of 86,000. So this should be 86,000. And the excess, the minimum benefits of 44,600 will be subjected to fringe benefit tax. Okay, so that's basically for your 13-month pay and other benefits and your diminuity benefits.